March, April to freaking December, it's a grind out here. And it's a grind on every on every end. It's a grind on, get, on, on getting the jobs and doing the work. And it's also a grind on holding up a dollar and stacking, on stack. And I, basically what I do is I go on the water in April and I don't come up for air until freaking Christmas. Tuesday morning and we're getting started we're not getting started real early today uh, okay so uh, today we got not I mean today we got it's about eight hundred dollars on here something like that we're gonna be done pretty early though uh, like I said if we don't get no rain we're gonna be in trouble uh, but I got a few other little jobs that we can do some stuff around my house that I want to do too uh, I want to pressure wash the fence and, uh, you know, uh, put a clear coat on it. That's a good time to do that when everything's nice and dry. Uh, so that might be one thing that we end up doing one day. Uh, not a lot of stuff uh, in the shop to do that's pressing, that, that, you know, that is pressing or nothing. Uh, Toby knows a guy that is good at welding casts and he knows how to do it um, so we're probably going to get that that auger bit prep for him to do that so but i got my drone yesterday y'all uh, i did i did get the i did get the drone uh now the drone that i got it's the same drone that i had apparently well what happens when you well what, what happens when you wreck a drone and, and you can't fix it. Well, the remote control is worth about 300 freaking dollars. And the battery's worth another 70 or $80 or more. Uh, according to what size battery you get, you know, you get the XL battery. And of course, I always get top of the line, so I got the XL battery. And so my thinking was, when I was looking for a drone, that I had, I, I had to buy the same drone I had, uh, but I didn't need all the accessories. You know the battery or the controller which saves about four hundred and fifty dollars you know so I ended up getting uh, the same drone I had for 300 bucks no battery and it's brand new still in the box no battery no controller no nothing and then I paired it to my existing controller I took the battery out of my out of the one I had, and I only have one battery for the drone. So now we, so we'll start getting some drone footage. Now I've been missing doing a little bit of drone footage here and there. I've been on a lot of cool jobs where uh, the drone would have really been been a cool thing to have in the videos. If I was gonna, I thought I was gonna have to spend another, you know, eight or nine hundred dollars, and I wasn't gonna do that. And that's why the drone is. I haven't done drone footage. And I told you guys back when I broke the drone that I was, a drone wasn't going to be that important to me, you know, uh, back then, you know, right then. It was more about, well, if you step back from everything that I've been doing and kind of look at everything as a whole, you, you can see that there is a little bit of rhyme and reason to, to the thing, you know, to everything that, that I do, you know. Uh, and I'm always watching the money, always. You know, and I make good and everything, but it's taking me a minute to get over the, the $5,000 spray foam. Because usually when I spend five grand on something, I'm making, I, I'm, I'm making 10 grand with it. And that was one thing that I just had to bite the bullet and do. Uh, and I'm just now Covering and getting all that money back, actual money back in the bank. I know, oh, you know, Ray, you're making five grand a week, 20 grand a month, blah, blah, blah. But it takes a lot, man, to do that. It 
it takes a lot to be able to uh, stack the money back up. Yeah, we might make eight hundred dollars yesterday, and we could, you know, we made eight hundred dollars in a couple hours yesterday, whatever. But we're going to get hurt. It ain't extra money now, because now we're going to lose out on uh, the yards because of how dry it is. <clears throat> so. So at the end of the day, you're not going forward. I mean, you're, 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 you're just making up for the yards that you're not doing when you do a job like we did yesterday. The thinking is to be able to be efficient enough on the lawns to be able to do a job like that and keep that money too. That's the whole freaking thing. And, and when that don't happen like, like I think it should, it, it, it makes everything, um, well, it, it makes you where you're number one, you're not bringing in as much money. That'd be the number one thing. And then number two, the money you are bringing in is taxed a little bit more because now you're not as efficient as you was. So if we're on a on a 10-yard day, just use that for example, if we're on a 10-yard day and it's $900, it costs me blah, blah, blah dollars to do to get to the $900 right in in good times in good weather in good everything well when a drought comes in or things start getting dry like they are here what ends up happening is pooty poo and sooty who and johnny poo over here uh they're on that 10 on that 10 route route you know they're they're there are three of the 10 and we'll just say they're 80 bucks each at 240 dollars well those three are saying i don't want you to come cut my grass right but I'm still having to go up there and cut everybody else's on that route. So now on that one route, I'm taking a 300 and you know a 300 dollar hit, give or take. And then what I end up doing is I end up filling in that 310 dollars with something from another route. But then on the other route, it starts drying up too, and then, so then next thing you know, you got a whole day where you ain't got no grass to cut. A day and a half where you ain't got no grass to cut. And it's because we're trying to be efficient. And you're not very efficient when you're leaving, you know, two hundred and something dollars, two hundred and eighty dollars or whatever on the table when you're when you're you know, five hundred yards from that from, from those three properties and you can't go do them because they don't want you to because it's so dry. And you drive by the yard and you look at it and you say, shit, I, I can't really blame them. What do you I mean, you know? And that's the dilemma. That I, so now what ends up happening is your profit number, your profits start going down uh, because it's costing you more to do the properties. Because now you're you're spending the same gas, the same everything, uh, and you're but you're missing out on three properties. But you're still up there all around them, and that makes you very inefficient. Because now I'm going to have to figure out how to incorporate those three yards back into the route uh, uh, to another route of next week. Even though these are not weekly yards, maybe next week they'll need it. But the other ones on that route won't because they're bi-weekly. Everybody on the route is bi-weekly. All my yards are bi-weekly. So if I go and do seven, then the, the, the three I didn't do, they got to wait two weeks. Well, now you're taxing the machines because in two weeks from now, and plus you're missing out on a whole on, on money you can't never get back. But in two weeks from now, you get over there, the yards are gonna take you longer, right? And uh, gonna be harder to do. If you move them to, to next week, right? Take them off of that route, when it, now you're really screwing up the efficiency for the whole route. Because now you're only doing seven on the 10 route. And then you got to go back up there to do those three on the off week that you're not there on the bi-weekly stuff. And all I do is bi-weekly. So uh, I know people do weekly, and I don't see how you do weekly in, in my area, but that's another video. So now what you have to do is you have to make sure that you ain't done all the work outside of the mowing. You know, bush trimming jobs, you know, minor skid steer jobs and stuff. I haven't really been marketing hardcore for skid steer work because, well, I, I don't have time. You know, if, you know, if the skid steer work comes to me, then I'll look at it and see if it's something I want to do. 
I got a couple of jobs I could probably get uh, that I've already looked at that I could probably get with the skid steer, but uh, I haven't really ran it down because I don't know what the weather's going to do. And we got so many lawns, if we get rain, then we're going to be knee deep in lawn work. But the way it goes is if we get rain right now, like say right now, it's pouring down rain, it rains nice and it, it, it soaks the ground real good, blah, blah, blah. Well, in my area, I don't know about anywhere else, but in my area, it'll be Saturday or Sunday before the grass really benefits from that. It'll take three or four days for the grass to benefit from a soaking. Just saying. And it puts you in a in a bad spot because again, you go, it goes back to you know uh, the unknown. And to me, when you're self-employed like I am, and you know uh, you don't like unknown things, there is always a little element of unknown because you never know what the weather's going to do. But I would be saying the same thing if we got a bunch of rain. There's a balance there in the middle somewhere, you, and you can't control it, so what can you do about it? You have to adapt as it comes to you. And uh, and to me, at this point in my career, uh, the more customers, the better. Because if you only got a handful of customers and you get a drought, well, that, that whole handful might not want you to come. At least with mine, I got some people that's got sprinklers. I got some people that are out of town. I got some people that that, that, that just don't give a damn. Yeah, right. Come cut it, clean it up, edge, and, and keep moving. But the majority of the people aren't like that. And it doesn't matter how much money they got or what kind of house they live in or where they live. Or, uh, none of that matters. Millionaires and thousandaires and whoever, they don't want to spend no more money on the lawn than then the, the person is spending that, that, that ain't got no money. Most millionaires are, are that I that, that customers that I have, they're, 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 they're more practical than most people that don't have money, if that makes any sense. They don't spend money on things that, uh, that they don't want to do. And they certainly don't waste money, knowingly waste money. And to customers, um, uh, you know, rich and poor, you know, the no rain, they look at that as a waste of money. It's a waste. And I tend to agree with some of them, <laughs> for sure, for sure. It gets a little bit stressful. That's why I'm glad I paid the skid steer up till September. I don't know, you know, I keep saying that, but you gotta keep going back to stuff like that. Doing things like that relieves pressure. And I'm just a small businessman, you know. I'm just small. I'm not. I'm not no, no great big guy. Y'all see, I got one guy working with me, and we do good for two guys. We do real good for that. We had three guys out here. Well, uh, I don't know that we'd do much better. I would have to have more work because of the way I do shit. I'm, I'm, we're 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 super efficient when we're doing the lawn maintenance stuff. And we try to be efficient on everything. You know, the planning and all, and I know it, it, it ain't great big money, but the planning and all that goes into doing that job yesterday, it's it's it, it's pretty deep. So did I really make good money at $800 and giving Toby 200? Did I really make good money? It was 600. Another, you know, um, I probably made 450, something like that. I'm a realist, man. Don't, don't think because I made $800 yesterday or we, we grossed $800 in an hour and 30 minutes over there that, that that is good enough. That's good enough for right now because of the drought. I'm not trying to... Sometimes you got to slow your road a little bit and let things catch up with you. Uh, and, and it, that's not... 
that's not good for a guy built like I am. Not that I'm great or sorry, but I'm built in a way to where I want to be super efficient in everything I do. And I have to find myself where we're not as efficient. And I know I keep using that word, but that word efficiency is everything uh, when you're doing this kind of work. You gotta stay with the efficiency. And if you can't, then because of things outside of your control, well, it was outside of our control and nothing I can do with it. I got to adapt to it and that's what we'll do. But we're taking a hit all along the way. And granted, with the skid steer and everything, the hit, we can make the hit a lot more minimal than somebody that just cuts grass. Uh, and we can make the hit a lot more minimal if we, uh, you know, by the way I spend money too. So... That became an X-Mark dealer right there. I didn't know that. Being super efficient is the way to go. And when you're and, and when you're used to doing things like that, when then when stuff like this comes up, where you ain't had no rain in two weeks, uh, that efficiency, man, you, you, you're damn, you're killing, you, you're biting yourself because, damn, man, I wish I hadn't, a, you know, now I'm going to run out of freaking work because we added, you know, you know if I'd have known it wasn't going to rain for three weeks, then I might not have even worked none over the weekend. You're always trying you, you'd rather be ahead than behind. I don't know, man. It just seems like it's a lot. It's a whole lot. But you know, I mean, I don't worry too much about it because I'm smart with my money and I bank my money and I don't spend my money, uh, you know, every, every day that I make it. So, uh, from know March April to freaking December it's a grind out here and it's a grind on every on every end it's a grind on, get, on, on getting the jobs and doing the work and it's also a grind on holding up a dollar and stacking and stack and I basically what I do is I go on the water in April and I don't come up for air until freaking Christmas something like that and, and the things I spend money on, uh, other than, you know, well, the drone is something I spent money on that I, that I, uh, but, you know, I ain't gonna work like that and not, and not be able to spend money on what I need or what I feel like I want or what I feel like I need. So, but if I wasn't very smart with the money, like go out and buy, I don't know, a Skag 72 inch, right? <laughs> then what? I just want to rat hole money. That's all I want to do. I want to save money and I want to. And I want to see it stacking. And it's just a self discipline thing, y'all. But I don't know about you guys, but I tend to spend less money when I'm working all the time. When I'm not working, like if we have a week of rain or some shit like that then you know i'm spending money on stuff that i wouldn't spend money on uh if i'm working all the time we need to earn a little something just enough you know i don't have i don't need a lot of money you know on the daily but i got to make sure my guy stays busy and the only thing i can do is try to keep them busy uh as i can uh and then you know use some of the profit that the business has made to pay him when we're not earning. And that's basically what I do. I think that's what every business does. But if you ain't smart with the profit, it ain't there for you to use for that. So I consciously save things to do around the house that are uh, bigger jobs uh, than I want to tackle myself. And uh, though I could, I have, and I probably will again, but I try to save that stuff so when we ain't working, I can pay somebody, my guy, to, to, to work on that instead of mowing grass. And if you're the employee, you gotta take the good with the bad. You gotta take the good yesterday, and then the bad, which is, you know, making, you know, 150 bucks pressure washing for three or four hours. You know, 
pressure washing is a lot more work. Pressure wa I got all the respect in the world for guys that do pressure washing business. Because that's a lot of work, man. That's hard work, man. It is. So. Alright y'all, so I'm over here finna wrap this one up. I still gotta cut the front yard, not a big deal. But y'all remember all this right here was real tall. So y'all get this. I mean they on the yeah they on the verge of either either firing me or me firing them. The guy over here, the owner, uh he's an older gentleman. I think he's from Pakistan or somewhere. Uh but He's always scowling at me, you know, looking at He don't ever say nothing, but he just, you know, got mean mug. So I deal with his son. So I told his son uh, last night, I says, hey, man, you know, because I know everything's dry and we're, we're running, you know, a lot uh, going through the work pretty quick. So it's the perfect time for me to cut this, right? So I call his son and I'm talking to his son. I say, hey, man, uh, so... Y'all give me uh, give me 250 bucks and I'll cut that back piece. And y'all remember it was all taller than what you see down there. But I was gonna cut the whole thing, right? And he says, "Oh man, uh, Dad, my dad hired somebody to do a fence. See that fence? And uh, he cut it. And I'm looking and, and I'm like, okay. He said, uh, my dad gave the guy a thousand dollars." to do that fence and cut this, but he didn't really cut it. Look over there. Why didn't he cut that? It looks like he cut this with a freaking swing blade or something, manual, or a weed eater or something. Doesn't look like a mower's been on it. When I would have cut the whole thing for 250. So now what's gonna end up happening, y'all see that fence up there. You can't get a mower inside that fence. The gate is, is I don't even know if I, the gate's about 36 inches. So, now these are people that cry about sixty dollars for this property. Well, if they think that I, I'm going to push mow that inside of that and stay at the same number, they're wrong. I'm not. This is going to be at the end. We're going to be at an impasse right here. Uh, I don't like the way you know. The, and the the dad, he knows I he knows that I do. I cut this last year. I mean, I've cut it. I'm the one that cleared it all, and I got a I got a video. I'm the one that cleared it all off to where we could put mowers on it. Got these big rock out of there, me and uh, Bo and Zach, a couple years ago. So I know I can run a mower in there and down there too. And I got a video of I, where I did the cleanup over here, you know, this back area. But the fence, that fence is so cheap. Oh, my God. They didn't, he doesn't have anything on the bottom of it. You know, there's no, uh, like in between the posts usually there's a piece of metal running down through the through the chain links you know i'm not a chain link expert or nothing but, but there's usually a piece of metal to kind of hold it firm at the bottom there's none in that he basically thought he was getting a good deal and he didn't this guy didn't cut all this son acted like he cut it all see so the reason i'm showing you guys this is so the expectations over here is totally different than the expectations on another job, right? If they call this cut, then that's that that, it, that their expectation is a lot less than what mine would be. My expectation, if somebody tells me this is cut, is cut down to the water. Done. All right, y'all. Y'all know what it is, man. It's Million Dollar Tuesday. Deuces. <laughs>